Hey, doesn't this set look pretty amazing? I, I am just amazed at the talent of people and the time that went into putting this all together. And uh, so if I start naming names, I'm going to miss somebody. But there's a, a team of people that have been working all week to put all this together just for VBS, for an experience for our kids. And so uh, I, I would concur with Pastor Brian to be praying for, for VBS this week. So um, what, what happened, Erica Lippincott had texted me Thursday night after worship practice and this had been kind of coming together and Thursday night they were practicing worship and she said you know it just feels like like a beach and maybe it would be appropriate for us and and just kind of tongue-in-cheek saying maybe she would wear our Hawaiian shirts for Sunday and uh, she was joking with me I took her serious and I said that's a great idea let's let's do that and so um so some of you wore Hawaiian shirts today, and I can tell that you're the ones that read the email on Friday, because that's where that information came out. It was late in the week. We had, I mean, didn't even put things together, but we thought, why not just go for it? So we posted some on Facebook yesterday and on email on Friday. If you don't get the Friday email, sign up, sign up to say, I just, I mean, you can do that on our info page. Sign up to get the Friday email emailed to you. Um, there's always a little blurb from me in there and just a lot of updated information. So uh, it, it would be worth it because you never know if I may be giving $100 away some week. <laughs> just saying. Maybe, maybe I'll give $100 away from Pastor Weaver. That, that sounds like a fun... <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. But sign up for the email. So I, I feel a little awkward today because usually I'm preaching in a suit uh, and a tie. And today I don't have a suit coat and I don't have a tie and I've got a uh, shirt with palm trees on it. But I'm thinking, just imagining myself standing up here with surfboards behind me, you watching me this morning as I, as I bring the word and uh, it, it would just look odd if I was wearing a suit. So I'm trying to fit the culture of the platform today and uh, thank you to all of you who participated. It's just kind of a fun, a fun thing for today. Hey, we had a schedule change proposal that we shared, we've been sharing for the last three weeks. If you haven't uh, got on, watch the video uh, from Pastor Weaver and myself. Uh, get on our YouTube channel, watch that video. We are looking sincerely for your feedback and for just your response to, to all of that. What do you think? Things that you may have questions about, we want to answer that. So uh, that isn't happening anytime soon. If we were to adopt that new proposed schedule, it wouldn't happen until the fall, like September at the earliest. So so there's time. We want to give you time to process and ask questions and uh, talk to us and share any thoughts or concerns, but uh, we truly do want your feedback. So last week, Pastor Zach preached a message. Uh, it, was, it had a different title, but the title that he gave us was, uh, What is Your Name? And he shared a message about Jacob. Jacob wrestled with God. You know the story in Genesis chapter 32. All night long, he wrestled with God. And, and, and through the night, and through, after all this had taken place, uh, the man that he was wrestling with, which we find out is God, said to him, what is your name? An interesting question to ask somebody that you've been wrestling with all night long, just to finally say, hey, what's your name, by the way? Well, he responded by saying, my name's Jacob, which last week, if you were here, you know what the name Jacob means, right? What does the name Jacob mean? Deceiver. And it was in that moment when he said, my name is Jacob, that God said, your name is no longer Jacob, your name is Israel. He changed his name. Jacob, the one who had had a history of deception, God changed something that day with Jacob. And God is famous for changing names. There's many people in the Bible that he changed names. Today we're gonna talk about names. So it kind of feels like a follow-up message, although this is just kind of standalone. But uh, I'm, I'm sharing from Proverbs chapter 22. If you want to turn in your Bibles there, we'll get to that scripture in a moment. But we're talking about a good name. A good name. Proverbs says a good name is better than riches. It's better than wealth. So the past two Sunday evenings, I've been preaching a series titled Better. And we know that life is filled with choices. You made a lot of decisions already today before you ever got here. Some of it was whether you're going to wear a Hawaiian shirt or not, whether you have a Hawaiian shirt, whether you want to wear the Hawaiian shirt that you didn't know that you had 
because it has dust all over the shoulders of it or what I don't I don't know what whatever choices you made what what toothpaste you were going to use this morning or if you would use deodorant or not a lot of choices that we make but how many of you know that in life life being filled with choices our life is really a sum total of the of the decisions that we've made and of the choices that, are fa- that we face day in and day out and throughout our day, there's always, of the choices that we have, there's a better choice. One is better than the other. Sometimes, and, and sometimes it happens this way that it, it really doesn't matter if we choose this or this, but most of the time, there's a better choice between two things. And there are an amazing amount of scriptures in the Bible that talk to what is better. And it's like God has given us advice about what we can do that is better than something else. So the first message that I preached a couple Sunday nights ago was from Psalm 84.10 that says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand days anywhere else. Saying one day, one 24-hour time period in the presence of God is better than a thousand days anywhere else. A thousand days is almost three years. It's two years and nine months So if you will think about your favorite place on earth, your favorite place to be, and and you would say, if I could spend a thousand days there or 24 hours with God, the psalmist is saying that 24 hour time period with God is better. Choose what's better. 1 Samuel 15, 22, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Samuel's telling Saul, listen, what God wants from you is not another sacrifice. What he wants is obedience. To obey him immediately. There's several other scriptures. Let me just kind of go through this real fast and they're not gonna be on the screen. So if you're taking notes today, you can just jot down these references. Go back and read them later. But these are just, uh, just a, a small handful of, some, of the many scriptures in, in the Bible that talk about what's better. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse six. Better to have one handful with quietness than two handfuls with hard work and chasing the wind. Proverbs 15, 16. Better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Proverbs 16, eight, better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. Proverbs 15, 17, a meal of vegetables where there is love is better than a fattened calf with hatred. Psalm 118, eight, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. Saying, listen, you can trust God 100% of the time. How many of you found that you can't always trust people? Better to trust the refuge of the Lord than to trust in people. Proverbs 16, 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold, good judgment than silver. And today, Proverbs 22, 1, that says this, a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. So more than riches, More than silver or gold, more than all the wealth that you can imagine, better than that is a a good name. And it's not saying that there is anything wrong with riches, that there's nothing wrong, uh, that there's something wrong with wealth. It's just saying, listen, if you have a choice between choosing wealth and riches or a good name, choose a good name. And you're going, okay, a million dollars, $10 $10 million, he's saying, listen, always, always, always choose a good name. Why choose a good name over wealth? Why choose a good name over riches? Here's, here's what I can tell you. All of us, every single one of us, one day, will have to stand before God and give an account. And money does not impress him. But what you do with your life is what you have total control over. Ecclesiastes chapter seven verse one says a good name is better than fine perfume and the day of death better than the day of birth. The contemporary English version says it like this, a good reputation at the time of death is better than loving care at the time of birth. So it matters how you finish. And so today as we talk about having a good name, what, is, what makes a good name? Why should we pursue a good name? 
I believe that every one of us, if we're honest, we want a good name. We want our name to reflect good things. When people talk about you, you want it to be positive. You want it to be good stuff. Some of you, you have popular names. You know what the most popular name in the United States of America is? James. James. More people are named James in the United States than any other person. There are a lot of people with the name James. I came across a a website this week, and I want to have a little fun with this today. Um, But it's it's this, howmanyofme.com. And so I know that some of you who have devices, you're thinking, I ought to check that out. So I'm going to, while I'm talking right now, I'm going to give you permission the next two minutes, type it in your device, howmanyofme.com. Well, all you do is you put in your first name or your last name, or you can put in both of those names together. So my name being Jeff Hill, this is what I found. In the United States, there are 1,946 people named Jeff Hill. There's nearly 2,000 of me running around in the United States. You know what the most popular name in the United States is? Well, let's, let's see. I told you James is the most popular first name. What's the most popular last name? Smith. Smith by like a million people. There are more people named Smith. There's nearly 3 million people out of 330 million people in the United States named Smith. You know that we have a pastor on our staff named Smith. He was standing up here just a little while ago with a pink, with a pink shirt on. Pastor Brian, Brian Smith. More Smith people in the, in the United States than anybody else. So you're there, if you're, at that, uh, if you're on that website, you'll, you can look up your own name. My last name is Hill. There are 513,479 people with a last name Hill in the United States. Now this is based off some uh, old um, census information, 2000 census, so it could have changed. But this is all, it's not real science. It's, it's just kind of fun based on some information that they've, that they've received. So... 1.3 million people in the United States named Jeff or Jeffrey. I've got a pretty popular name, but none as popular as John Smith. There are 48,642 people in the United States named John Smith. How many of you know a John Smith? I do. I know a John Smith. So just interesting, interesting facts. My grandson is named Wells, Wells Hill. There are three Wells Hills in the United States. He is so unique. Somebody came up to me afterwards in the early service and said, there's only one of my wife. And that's true. Man, you guys are quiet. I'm giving you some great information here. The top, the top five last names in the United States. Smith. We have Smiths in here. Johnson. I know we have Johnsons. Williams. We have Williams in our church. Brown and Jones, top five last names in the United States. The most common names, first names, James, John, Robert, Michael, and Mary. Mary comes in at five. The women have much more diverse names, evidently. Anyway, that's just something, something kind of fun. You're still quiet. Let me, give you, let me give you another little, since Pastor Brian has the most popular last name in the United States, another pastor on our staff, Pastor Courtney, has the last name Wheats, W-E-E-T-S. There's only 330 people in the United States with the last name Wheats. Isn't that interesting? So Courtney really is a one of a kind in many ways. So when we named our children, there were some th- certain things that we were looking for as we talk about names. We, I, I wanted a name that couldn't be mispronounced. And, and check, we, we, we accomplished that. Uh, we have Zachary, Mackenzie, Brianna, Elijah, Ethan. All pretty easily pronounced names, which I thought I had done really good until I went to Brianna's graduation from college just a month or so ago. And as she walked across the platform, they said, Brianna Hill. I don't even think her degree counts now because they didn't even say her name right as she walked across walked across the the stage there. But I wanted a name that people wouldn't make fun of, so we didn't name any children Nimrod. We didn't name anyone Nebuchadnezzar. 
We didn't name any, cho- any of our children Saddam. Those are names that just weren't going weren't gonna to fit. It didn't work. There were some names that I liked, but Jeannie uh, knew someone that had a bad experience with that name and, and vice versa. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to name your children, but you want, you want a good name. And when we talk about having a good name, what we're really talking about is a good reputation. What is the impression that people associate with your name? That becomes your reputation. You want a good name, and a good name takes time to build. We live in a day where a lot of people, there are a lot of people who say, I really don't care what people think of me. I'm just going to put myself out there, and they can take it or leave it. That is spoken of a social media-ite type person. There's a lot of people that feel emboldened these days just to say whatever they want to say, not really care what people think, but how many of you know it's easy to get online and say something to a computer, type it out, versus saying something to somebody uh, face-to-face? That's the culture that we live in, but we're talking about having a good name. If you have a good name, the Bible tells us that you have something that's very valuable, Without a doubt, the Bible is very clear that a good reputation, a good name is of great value. It's something that we should strive to earn and work hard to maintain and to keep. A good name means that you have high standing among others. You have dignity and honor, respect. You have a good reputation. You can be trusted because you're honest. You have personal integrity. You have honorable behavior, moral courage, and godly wisdom. All those things go into making a good name. It's a good and right thing for us to be concerned about our witness in the world. As a, as a follower of Jesus, we should want people to be attracted to him through us. And the way that's going to happen is for us to have a good name, one that people can trust and one that people know when they hear your name, they think of something uh, dependable. They think of something good. They don't think this is someone that I can't trust. But there's a lot involved to managing a reputation. There's a lot involved to in managing a reputation that is out of your control. Just this winter, we had an experience where my wife, Jeannie, uh, was canceled from Facebook. And they said that she was posting inappropriate pictures. If you know my wife, <laughs> we couldn't figure out what the deal is. But once you get canceled, it is, I think it's nearly impossible to get back on. Um, what we found out in that, not understanding all of that, what we found out, uh, Jeannie had got on that same day and noticed that um, we had, through Sam's Club, had purchased three Apple Watches and they were being delivered from Houston to Florida. And so she, you know, calls and says, we didn't order any Apple Watches. And so fortunately, Sam's got involved and interrupted the shipment and got, we got credit for that. But on that same day, we had two $50 plus purchases at Chipotle in Kansas City on my debit card. There is something about working to maintain a reputation and a good name that all of a sudden in a moment you feel like, what has happened? And it's not money that is the important thing. It's who's got my name. In a day of, of uh, identity theft, you know that in just a click of a button or just a typed out statement somewhere could really, really hurt your name and your reputation. In this cancel culture world, it's become less popular to be Christian to have a, a true biblical worldview, you, you may take a hit. A biblical worldview that values, that values life, that values biblical marriage, that values absolute truth, right and wrong. There's so much pressure in our world for us to adopt the views of our culture. And so to really stand strong and to, and to, and to live a, a godly, moral good life, to have a good name, it's not as easy as maybe it once was. There's a quote from Shakespeare that I want to share with you, and it says this. This is what Shakespeare said. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name 
robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. He's saying, listen, you can take all the money in the world. Money is just changing hands all the time. But if you're going to rob or steal from me my good name, you can rob me of my good name. It does nothing for you, but it takes everything away from me. A name is important. A good name is something to be valued. We were in Florida, it's been about seven years ago on vacation, and we had no longer landed, got our, our rental car, and had gone and stopped for breakfast to get something to eat, only to come out and find that someone had broken into our van and stole my backpack and Jeannie's backpack, which had our passports and money and computers and all the important things. And I'm thinking, you know what? Money is the last thing that was on my mind. But the, the feeling of somebody has my information. What are they going to do with that? What can they do with it? It's a, it's a sinking, sick feeling. But a name is what is so important. So we conclude that having a good name is worth the effort. It's worth pers- preserving a good name. So I want to give you uh, just five things real quick in the time that we have of uh, what, what is blessing the blessings of a good name. And the first one is this, a good name gives guidance. And I'm gonna give you some scriptures and I'm gonna talk real fast through this and we'll get to a story that we'll conclude with. But a good name gives guidance. Proverbs 11:3. the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by duplicity. How does a person's integrity guide them? When you have a good name, a good name matters to you and it's much like the backup sensor on a lot of new vehicles. I don't have this on my vehicle, but I've seen it on other people's where when you're backing up and you get close to an object, beep, 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 and you know stop, right? So a good name is, is something that can guide us to make the right decisions. Because when, if we value our name and we get in a situation where our name could be hurt in some way, a good name will help us to steer clear of bad choices. So if losing your good name is part of the cost of doing something, then you need to rethink that. Ask yourself the question, how will this affect my good name? How will being seen in this place, how will being seen wearing this? I can't tell you the the struggle that I went through today just wearing a, a Hawaiian shirt and not a suit coat. But here I am, blending in with the surfboards behind me. But asking yourself this, these questions. Um, how will being seen drinking this affect my name? How will being seen saying this affect my good name? If your desire is to keep your good name, that good name will be a guide to help you make good choices. Proverbs thirteen six: Godliness guards the path of the blameless, but, evil, but the evil are misled by sin. Number two, a good name brings and gives protection. It protects. How many, of, how many times have you reached a conclusion about someone based on whether they are, uh, have a good or bad reputation? Whether that's fair or not, we all tend to do it. And I want to illustrate it like this. Say you heard a story that Pastor Anna, who is our early childhood pastor, some of you know her, some of you know her well, some of you don't, um, but you heard the story that Pastor Anna was at a baseball game and Pastor Anna ended up cursing out the umpire. Which led to her fighting uh, with a verbal fight with another fan in the stands which led to a fist fight out in the parking lot. <laughs> and, and you laugh, Why, whether you know her or not. Here's what you, you go, okay, Anna? We're talking Pastor Anna? Anna Flanders? I never... I don't even know that she can swear. She's so timid. She's so, she's so quiet. She is, no way she's cursing out an umpire. You know what I'm saying? Because you know her, or maybe, maybe because you know the association. She's a pastor at New Hope. No, Pastor Weaver, Pastor Jeff would never, they would never go for someone like that being on their staff. Now, any of us can have a bad moment. But if you heard that story about Pastor Anna, you would just say, absolutely not, because of her name, because of who she is. There may be some of you in the room where you hear that story and you go, eh, maybe. (laughs) 
Proverbs 10, 9, the man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. Number three, a good name brings favor with people. There's a woman named Ruth in the Bible, and Ruth was a a woman with great character. She went through a horrible loss of her husband. She ended up vowing to stay with her mother-in-law, Naomi. But I want to ask you this. What happens when someone shows great character in hard and difficult times? When someone shows great character through difficult times, they stand out. They're uncommon. So word gets around and Boaz comes into the picture and she asks for his help. And this is what he says in Ruth 3.11. He says, don't worry about a thing, Ruth. I will do what is necessary for everyone in town knows that you are a virtuous woman. Everybody knows you. You don't have to worry. You have a good name. Paul was looking for someone to join him on his ministry travels in Acts chapter 16. It says that he, Paul went to Derby and then to Lystra, and there was a young man there named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, and his father was a Greek. Timothy was well thought of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. Timothy had a good name with the people. He became one of Paul's closest disciples. Number four, a good name is blessed by God. Look at a character named Job in the Bible. There's a book written about him. And we find in the very beginning of the book of Job that he had a good name. He was a good man and God had blessed him. And God points this out after Satan had been allowed to attack him. In verse, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, The Lord asked Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil, and he has maintained his integrity, even though you urge me to harm him without cause. God blessed Job beyond imagination. Solomon, when he was just getting started as king, Solomon, we have, we've read some in Ecclesiastes and some in the Proverbs. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4 and 5 says, as for you, if you walk before me with integrity, this is God speaking to Solomon, if you walk before me in integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, and do all that I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever, as I promised David your father. God says, keep a good name, and I'll bless you. And the fifth one is this, those with a good name can be trusted with responsibility. A good name will allow you to be trusted. Nehemiah chapter 7. Nehemiah says, After the wall had been rebuilt and I had set the doors in place, the gatekeepers and singers and the Levites were appointed. I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity and feared God more than most men do. Your character, your good name, will cause you to be trusted with responsibility. In Acts chapter 6, they were, there was, uh, uh, the church had grown and the Greek-speaking Jews uh, were against the, the Hebrew-speaking believers and, and they were upset because uh, their widows were being discriminated against as they were distributing food. So the 12 apostles got together and this is what they said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running food programs. And so brothers, select seven men who are well-respected, who are full of the spirit and full of wisdom and we will give them this responsibility. Choose the people who can be trusted. Titus chapter chapter two, verse seven and eight, in everything, set them an example by doing what is good in your teaching. Show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have had nothing bad to say about us. So there's something to say about a good name. It brings blessing, there's trust, there's a lot, of, a lot of great things that go with a good name, and a good name is to be desired more than any wealth or silver or gold. I want to close with a, with a story, an illustration, a modern-day parable shared by Max Licato, which was shared with him on an airplane flight by a rabbi. And in this parable, there was a CEO who had the top floor of this high-rise skyscraper in Manhattan. He was the CEO. His office was on the top floor. Most people had never seen him, but they had met his daughter who worked in the building. She worked for her father. Unfortunately, she exploited the family position by making demands on people. One morning, the owner's daughter approached Bert. Bert was the guard. And she said, Bert, I'm I'm hungry. Will you go down the street and buy me a muffin? Well, this demand of of Bert put him in a quandary. quandary. He was on duty. 
and leaving his post would put the building at risk. But she was insisting, come on, Bert, hurry up, go get me a muffin. What option did he have? As he left to go get the muffin for this daughter, he thought something like this, if that daughter is so bossy, what does that say about her father? But the owner's daughter was just getting started while she was munching on the muffin that Bert had brought her. She bumped into a secretary who was carrying a load of papers. Where are you going with all those papers, she asked. And she said, I'm on my way to have them bound for a meeting this afternoon. The owner's daughter said, forget the meeting. I want you to come to my office and vacuum my carpet. So the secretary told, said, I was told. And she goes, forget what you were told. I need you to come and vacuum my office. I'm telling you something else. The secretary had no choice. This was the owner's daughter speaking, which caused her to question the wisdom of the owner. And on and on the owner's daughter went, making demands, calling the shots, interrupting schedules. She never invoked the name of her dad. She never leveraged her comments with, my dad said, or you know who my dad is, right? There was no need to do that. She was the owner's child. Doesn't that speak for the father? And so Bert abandoned his post. The secretary failed to finish her task. And more than one employee questioned the wisdom and the character of the man upstairs. They wondered, does he really know what he's doing? But what if the story was different? What if the owner's daughter acted differently? Rather than demand a muffin from Bert, what if she brought a muffin to him? Saying, I thought of you this morning, Bert, and I know you come in very, very early. Do you even get breakfast? I thought of you and I brought this muffin so that you can enjoy breakfast this morning. Here, enjoy this muffin. On the way to the elevator, she sees the secretary with an armload of documents and she says, my, that, that is a huge load. Can I help you? To which she says, thank you. And the two of them carry those stacks of documents down the hallway to the office where they're to be bound. And what if that's how the owner's daughter conducted herself throughout the day? Imagine her engaging the workers and asking them about their families, offering to bring them coffee, she warmly welcomes new workers and generously praises the hard workers. And so the owner's daughter, through her acts of kindness and concern, raises the level of joy in the entire company. The owner's daughter doesn't even mention her father's name. She never declares, my father said, or you know who my father is, right? There's no need of that because she's the owner's daughter. Doesn't this child speak on his behalf? Doesn't the child reflect the heart and the mind of her father? When she speaks, they assume that she speaks for him. And because they think highly of her, they think highly of him, the father. And even though they've not seen him and they've not met him, they know his child. And so they know his heart. A good name. See, here's the reality. We're the children of our Heavenly Father, and He's the owner and CEO of everything. The only glimpse of God that many people in our world get is what they see through you. And if we conduct ourselves in a negative, unattractive way, the results will reflect poor on the Father and bring shame to the family name. But if we conduct ourselves in a positive, attractive way, we leave a good reflection of our Father, and we protect his good name. I want to share with you one last scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, a chapter that you're familiar with, I'm sure, but listen to these first four verses. It says, my child, never forget the things that I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years, and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. And then you will find favor with both God and people. And you will earn a good reputation. You will earn a good name. And then he goes on to say this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. A good name is to be desired more than, than riches. More than wealth is a good name. Do you want a good name? Do you want to accurately reflect the Father? See, here's what I know. In the days that we live in right now, the world is changing. Our culture is changing. 
It's not really that cool or hip to be a Christian, to stand for values, to stand for truth, to stand for biblical principles. And there's more and more of the culture trying to squeeze us into conforming to what they are saying, to what they believe. How difficult is it gonna be for us to stand and stand for what's right and stand for what's true, especially if our name says we'll do whatever. And we're more about money, we're more about things than we are about our name, our representation, who we're representing. We have an opportunity to make a difference. And I wanna encourage you more than anything, your name is the most important thing that you can, that you can build on a name, a good name, so that when people hear the name Carrie, they know there's a guy I can trust. There's a guy that does business, and I can trust everything that he, that he says. It takes a while to build a name. But with God's help, there's blessing. I want everybody to bow your heads, close your eyes. If you're in the room today and you don't bear the name of God the Father, Jesus his Son. You're, you're, you're not a Christian. You've never opened your heart and life to Jesus. The greatest privilege that you have in this life, in this world, is to know and have a relationship with Jesus. He loves you so much. Pastor Brian shared from scripture earlier about God's great love for us. He loves you so much that he gave his life and he came and died in your place so that you could be saved, forgiven, and free. And it's just a matter of opening your heart and saying yes to him. In the room today, there are people who never chosen to follow Jesus, or maybe you did, but you've fallen away. And you're saying today, I want to come back to that relationship with Jesus. Cross the room with everybody's head bowed and eyes closed. And you'd say, Pastor Jeff, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to bear the name of Christ, a Christian, a follower of Jesus. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. If you're online today and you're choosing to follow Jesus, would you just pray this prayer with me with those in the room? Father, today I thank you that it's not all about me and it's not up to me to do what's good and right with myself. You've already given me a plan and I choose your plan. I choose to go your way. I choose your purpose, your plan, your will for my life. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for taking my sin upon yourself. Thank you for making a way, saving me. Thank you for giving me hope and a future. I give my life to you. Be Lord of my life. I choose you. Thank you for choosing me love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Now to everybody else in the room, with your eyes open, something the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you even while I'm talking today. There's something maybe in your life where you go, you know what, there's a, there's a, there's a hole that's letting some things in my life. I, honestly, you know, the Bible tells us over and over, what comes out of our life is based on what goes in. And I'm telling you that if you want to control what comes out of your life, then you control what comes in. And there are influences and things that we allow into our life that's going to produce things that we don't necessarily want or like. And we're the gatekeepers. We're the ones that are guarding our heart. Guard your heart above all else, the scripture says, for out of it is the, the outflow, of the wellspring of life. Guard your heart. But you would say today, you know, I know these things. I know that I, I, I want a good name. I want to accurately represent my Father. I want people to see Jesus in me. I want people to see Jesus through me. I want to be able to point people to the Father by my life. But I know that there's some things in my life that have just, maybe I've been lazy, maybe I've been slack or lax in some area of my life. And today the Holy Spirit is speaking something to me through this message, not in maybe even anything that I said, but you know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. And if you make a commitment to say, I want things to change today. And you'd say, I want a good name more than anything else. And there's things that are going to change starting today. If that's you, I want to just ask you to stand and make that commitment right here in front of everybody. This is not easy. It's not easy to stand. But I'm telling you, in the world that we live in, it's getting harder and harder for us to take a stand for holiness and righteousness and what's true 
and what's good and what's right. You want a good name more than anything. Father, I pray that you'd make us lights and salt in this world, that our life would point people to Jesus, that our life, our name, when people hear my name, that they think of you. When they hear my name, they think of somebody that I can trust, somebody that I can believe, somebody that I know. There's something about them. I understand, God, that we're imperfect people but you're a perfect God. Live strong and full in us. And may we bring honor and glory to you and to your name and how we live. Help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Would you stand and let's make this song as we close today, a song of consecration. Christ, be magnified in my life.